All right, welcome back. How you doing? This is Kevin McCain with Kevin McCain Studios. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of painting today in oil. And we're going to be doing a simple sphere and cube. So we're going to be dealing with three sh with 3D or creating that illusion of, the th of 3D. And so we're going to be dealing with something uh, we call form shadows. Something that creates volume and depth. And it's what... It, that's what happens when we shine light on an object is that it creates form shadows that give it the illusion of depth. So I'm going to be using uh, probably these three brushes uh, as far as this goes. Um, this is a number six long, extra long flat. This is a soft hair brush. I think it's kind of like squirrel or it might be a like a synthetic mongoose. Um, this is just a regular bristle brush. This is a bright though. And this was uh, close enough that I grabbed it. So <laughs> it'll work. Um, this is also number six, uh, extra long flat. And so you can see that sometimes it's not just because it's a, fl it's a flat or it's the same, same number. It doesn't mean that, that they're always the same dimensions. This looks a little bit thinner and this looks a little thicker. And it's but even by the same company. So there are no um, standards in with brushes. So again, this I, I have some students that bring in Winton versus uh, Grumbacher. Again, they, they're not they're not the same size. They're close, um, but there's basically two different systems. There's like a European system and there's a an American system, uh, or you know, but there's two different systems. I don't know if one's based on millimeters and and something's based on something else. But this number six and that and that that other numbering system. Would be almost like a, a 10 or a 12 or something like that, um, and so it, you know, to get something that's like this big would be be almost an 18 or something like that. Um, and that other and that other size category was that one I just showed you was like an eight. But this is what we're going to be using again: basically um, a couple of bristle brushes, and then we got the soft hair brush. Um, I'm going to go ahead and be uh, again painting the. Uh, and a, a sphere on top of on top of a cube and I'm gonna have that provided uh, that'll be in, it'll be shown in the video uh, it's just to give you an idea of what I'm look what I was looking at and what I'm referencing as I'm talking about it so all right let's get started so again we've got this is just I've got my paint over here this is oil paint Titanium white. This is ivory black. Uh, we've mixed up our three grays uh, And I've mixed up a couple grays in between those so I've got five grays And I could certainly mix you know two or three more and, and give myself just more steps. It's less mixing That's all there is to it. This is just a cotton. This is a pad um, With cotton canvas in it. It's a it's a medium texture. It's actual canvas. It's not paper So that's kind of nice um, and it's cut really nice. Usually I would use, I, no, you could use anything. You could use a canvas board uh, or you could use stretch canvas. This is just something that, again, is really clean. So it made some sense to grab it and bring it on over. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't think I'm going to use more than this on uh, on my uh, for my painting and in fact I think for right now I'm going to go ahead and just tip this up a little bit so I can see it a little better uh, as far as that goes I think that'll be nice um, and I think we're going to get this so you can still see that as far as that goes Let's see how stable that is. Well, I'll do it for now, at least in the drawing stage. I don't think I'll leave it here, but so again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna I'm gonna simplify. Uh, I've got a little more complex tabletops, so but instead of dealing with all the folds and there's cloth on there and all this sort of stuff, uh, I'm gonna get also um, sort of a, a light middle gray. If I didn't have that, I'd use my middle gray. And I'm going to thin this down to about the consistency of milk, uh, and that would be whole milk. 
uh, because I'm going to sketch with this. And so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with the fact that we're going to go ahead and, and, and make the tabletop just a nice straight line. And this will be the wall and this will be the tabletop. Okay. And on this tabletop, I'm going to have my cube with my sphere. I just decided to lift this tabletop a little bit. Um, I'm also, when I look at my my cube, I need to decide what I'm, what I'm seeing. And because I, I have a cube that's in either one or two point perspective. Um, and as I look at it, I'm thinking of my line of sight. And I can see, and so by looking at that, I go, hey, is it perpendicular to my line of sight? If it's not, well, then it's a corner view. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm at a slight corner view. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start my drawing um, with where my corner is going to start. Now, normally, I would um, I would start with my with my with my um, U up here, but I'm going to start down here with my footprint. Um, I also need to decide where I'm going to put this. I just realized the way I'm going is not where I'm going to want to put this. So let me do this a little differently. Let me go ahead. Uh, I just went ahead and decided I'm going to do this a little bit more like I normally would, which would be I'm going to put my sort of the I'm going to keep this as a, as a sort of as a square first because this is just for um, just for composition and wipe some of that off and then on top of this we're going to have again a a, a, a sphere All right. Again, this is not a calligraphy brush, so I'm going to use these shorts and stops and things like that to, to paint that. Okay. And. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and decide whether. Um, record where the corner is on this guy and I'm going to bring down my sides of this see where it is going to intersect my cube <clears throat> alright so we now we're going to start drawing the cube in here we're going to use three sets of three lines that are that are parallel, truly parallel. I'm not going to worry about diminishments right now, uh, or diminution or any of that stuff. Uh, this is almost a front view, but not quite. Which means I would probably want to do one of two things: I either want to make it seem like it really is, either straighten it out into a front view, or <clears throat> really make it clear that this is. Uh, in two point perspective. If it looks like, if it's so soft that the, <clears throat> pardon me, that looks like the the drawing couldn't make up its mind, that's not going to help, that's not going to help me. Uh, that's that's not a good thing. So again, I'm going to bring this that over. This is going to be parallel to these three lines. Three sets of three lines that are parallel. This is going to come over here and this should be parallel to these three lines over here, right? And then we're going to have our cube, as far as that goes. Now I think this is these are up just a bit. I think this needs to sit down maybe just a little bit more, which would bring this down just a bit. Okay. Now this is going to look like it's coming in a little bit because of the angle of the camera. Uh, but these are actually a, pretty close to straight. Uh, in fact, they're even. I'm even bringing them out just a little bit, just for the camera, so that they'll look a little bit more straight. And they still look. They kind of still look like they're coming in a bit. Let me see if I can. Let's 
So a lot, some of this is just, again, some of this is just that camera distortion that we're getting. And so, I want to make you aware, we'll go ahead and flatten this out, it won't be as bad. Part of it is because I've kicked this up at a slight angle. Just so I can see this as I'm drawing it, it makes it a little easier for me. Um, I'm drawing through the object too. Now, you might say, well, we're painting. Why do you keep talking about drawing? Well, you know, well, this is the drawing aspect of painting where we're thinking about the shapes, we're thinking about the perspective, we're thinking of stuff stacked on top, so, top of other stuff. All right, so this looks, these three look parallel. If you're not, you know, if you're not sure, bring the lines out and you can tell a little bit easier. This looks like this one's parallel and this one, so these three, those aren't too bad either. So we have a cube, and then on this cube we've got this, again, this little sphere. And if I went ahead and looked at that sphere, now I could, I could take a, you know, I could, I could eyeball it or I could take a measurement with my brush, and it looks like this sphere should be about halfway up the, the total height of this thing, close to it. And so I could take this and go, hey, is that the same right there, and it pretty much is. <coughs> I can also take a measurement real quick, you know, siding down my brush to check some alignments on the sides of this thing, as far as that goes, which gives me just a little more information. So this is going to be, this is the beginning um, drawing right here. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and this has a little bit of cast shadow through here, a little bit of cast shadow coming through here. Pardon me. <clears throat> this was the other reason I wanted to draw through this because it felt like this thing's not sitting on the table, which of course it is not. If this is uh, the 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 footprint <coughs> where this cube would be hanging back off the edge of the edge of the table. So we're gonna go ahead and just lift that table and just make sure that everything is sitting. You know, so this is now sitting on the table instead of before this was like half off. And of course we can you know check really quickly is the width of this thing the same as the height of this thing it's pretty close and again I'm going to be I'm going to be doing a lot of trimming of this object as I paint it so it's it's going to be um, reestablished several times what, I, what I'm actually what I'm actually seeing okay This is just a notation of the shadow side, and then this is a notation that this is in shadow, and that this is in shadow. So I'm already trying to think of the um, the light side versus the shadow side, what's happening to it. Um, all right, so this is the cast shadow. Like so. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we can now start painting this thing. I've got I've got in here what I want in terms of this in terms of this painting. Um, yeah, I don't think we need all that much. Uh, in terms of the, the paint itself, I want to really go ahead and um, focus in on the area with the cube. So I'm going to go ahead and chop this off. I don't need to paint all that in there. I think I'll cut this a little bit as well. Um, 
because this is just a study. It's it's no big deal. You know, it's something we need to worry about too much. Now, what I'm going to start with though is I'm going to start with the um, the value of the wall. Um, and again, this is th this has some cloth behind it, and so I'm trying to ignore the cloth and I'm trying to look at the wall, and I'm trying to ask myself, you know, how uh, how light or how dark is it? And so I've got a wall that's in half tone. In other words, it's middle values. So that's way too thin. That's just like a, a scumming on the on the canvas, like milk um, spilt on here or something. We need enough paint to cover this. This is supposed to be like butter and there should be enough paint that it actually leaves you know a bit of a, a ridge. Now I don't want it like super thick. So when I say ridge I don't I mean I'm not I, I'm still thinning the, the paint down because I don't want it too thick and I'm paint uh, and I'm I'm thinning it down to be the consistency of of like heavy cream uh, or that, you know, as thick as softened butter on like a, an afternoon in August or something like that. Um, we want this to have a nice consistency. Now again, this is a white wall, but it's it's going into sh it's the light has gone across it, and I actually chose which part of the wall. There's like a part of the wall right next to the light that just seemed like it had too much contrast, and so I chose this because it's it's further away from the light. I think it will play up because this is a dark, um, sort of a medium value or medium gray, brown uh, ball made or sphere made from paper, and so I want I want that to have some character. I want it to be clear that 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 it's it's darker than the wall uh, in some places. And, and and then as the the light comes over here, we're going to use a little bit a little bit lighter gray. Um, now, this is a little too light for me, but by the time I I work into this, it'll be just fine. So, whenever we're painting, a lot of times, unless I'm unless I'm doing like one where I'm. I'm doing all with my strokes. We're actually going to be blending quite a bit of this. If I was doing something that was more impressionistic or had what's called broken brushwork, uh, you're not blending those brush strokes. You're actually mixing all your all your values, and so there's much less blending going on, and you and you leave the strokes broken. Uh, in other words, you don't you don't blend them, and. Uh, well, I'm not. We're not doing that. This is a little bit easier technique to to begin painting with, and then we'll get into more intermediate and advanced uh, techniques later on. So again, I, and I'm trying to keep this because I put this on a little bit too thin in, in the beginning, and uh, kind of wish I wished I hadn't. Uh, and so now I'm trying to again keep the consistency to be what I want. Um, and then this is a transition going from a little lighter. Going a little darker, okay, very quickly, like so. We've got just a little gradation, which is nice. Gradations are good. I'm then going to go ahead and start to. I'm going to describe the tablecloth. Now, the tablecloth is, is a white tablecloth, and it's in light, and so it's it's really quite bright. But and to make this feel lighter, this. The, the wall gets a little bit darker as it gets closer to where the wall meets the tablecloth. Now there is a there's a, a rule in drawing and painting is that whenever you have two edges that meet, one edge is always going uh, darker while the other edge goes lighter. So this wall in the back is it's a light wall, but it's actually like an antique white, so it's not as bright as the tablecloth. So this will go a little darker as then I get ready to put the tablecloth in, the tablecloth value. Mixing this up over here. And we're going to start off just a, with a little bit, it's not going to be pure white just yet, especially as it goes back. So as it goes back, 
we want less contrast. So as this goes back, this tablecloth is going to get just slightly darker, though not as dark as the wall, because the wall is a little bit darker than the tablecloth. Okay, the tablecloth is also going to get a little darker as it moves over here, less light. Light is traveling across this surface, and there's less light as it moves across the surface. The light's up here. So that means this is going to get slightly darker. And the one thing about paint with oil paint, when you first start doing it, it just seems so uh, strange. Uh, but as you get used to it, you're like, ah, oh, it's not strange. It's creamy. It's buttery. Uh, and that's, you know, when I start talking about the butter consistency, it's uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. That's you know, and that's what we look forward to is with painting with oil is that nice buttery consistency. Now I'm also using my, my, my paintbrush. Now I should be, I should never be holding my paintbrush any closer than halfway. Uh, you have more control at the back of the brush than you do at the front of the brush. And I'm also buttering this on. So in other words, my, the angle of my brush is important. So the angle of my brush, it should be almost parallel to the surface. The more parallel it is, the more, you know, I can butter stuff on, the easier I can blend. The more perpendicular it is, if I've got this brush straight up like this, uh, and it's perpendicular to that surface, it's going to be scraping paint off. So this is putting paint down when it's almost uh, parallel <clears throat> to the surface. If I'm like this, standing it up, well then it's going to scrape paint off. So I want to make sure that as I'm as I'm working, that I'm thinking about, you know, not just how how thick is the, how, you know, how thick is the paint? Is it too stiff or is it too runny? If it's too runny, add more, uh, you know, regular paint that'll stiffen it up. If it's if it's too stiff, well then add just a little bit of mineral spirits. Um, and we don't want too much nor too little. Too little and I can't blend. Too much and I, I can't control the blend at all. And so we're looking for sort of a happy medium, and we call it sort of the like the mud, as we call it, working in the mud, and. Uh, <clears throat> that's where it's uh, that's where it's best. That's. That's where it, the, the magic happens when we're painting. So I've got just a little bit of a gradation here. Whoops. That pulled some of that paint here, which I didn't want. I'm going to get true white paint and put it down there. I'm trying to do what's called an overmix. So I made it much lighter so that by the time I blend it, it won't be too dark. Didn't work. Okay, so then we're going to go for the, the, uh, the more drastic option, which... So there's so much dark in there that, that I'll never get that light enough if I don't get rid of that paint. And so we're going to go ahead and just wipe that off like so. Because otherwise you'll just be you'll, be, you'll be fighting this and fighting this and fighting this. And guess what? The paint will always win. So there we go. All right, that's better. <coughs> so um, again, once again, if this was like, uh, if I was looking at the wall, uh, this always, you know, as it as the as this light antique wall gets closer to the tablecloth, again, it'll start to it, the the light will start to go and get a little darker. Again, there's and there's a there's a there's a term for this effect, and photographers used it. And it was a I believe it was developed by a photographer, or maybe it was just someone that really studied light. But there's a name for this where, where the one edge starts to go darker while one so this is the edge going darker and this is the edge that's lighter. Um, as nice as, and fun as this is, we didn't come here just to, to deal with this tablecloth. Now I can't tell right now if this is so I have to I have to pull this up because otherwise it's in perspective. I can't tell. I can't see it uh, properly and I'm trying to make sure that this side and this side line up pretty close anyways. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be close. Alright. Okay. That'll be close enough. So now we're actually going to rough in. Uh, and I like to do the work sort of, uh, you know, I, I kind of do the surrounding background uh, before I come into this other stuff normally. Uh, and people will talk a little bit about paintings grow as, as you paint on them. And what that means is you're going to see my paint push outwards a little bit. 
um, which is more common. People's, you know, their, their stuff usually gets wider as they paint it. And part of that is you want you need the overlap with the surrounding area. Um, what that means is something like this line right here. It's probably gonna have to come in a little bit. And the only way to do that, and I probably wish I, have to, I should probably wipe that. I'm just I know that's not gonna it's not gonna be light enough. So I'm gonna wipe that line and then come in here with paint. And the reason we have to wipe is because there's enough black in there to dirty my paint up. So I won't have any control over it. So instead of fighting that, if you ever have to lift a value more than two steps of value, and if you don't know what your value steps are, check out the video on on the uh, on the gray scale that we're we're dealing with paint, we're dealing with values. You have to know your value scale, or you're gonna you're, you're not gonna do as well. You're not gonna improve with your paint as quickly because you don't understand. It'd be like trying to play songs with a you know, on the piano, uh, you know, like Mary had a little lamb, but you don't understand what the treble clef is or what the notes are. You're gonna have a heck of a time stumbling over it, and it's, it's it's something very similar with this. Now the, the the light's over from the side, but it's also a little bit behind. So this is the lightest, and then this is a little bit into shadow, and this is and this is actually, or what I should say, light value. This is my middle value, and then this is shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and. I've run out of white paint. I don't know if you can see that, but my my white paint is pretty much gone. Now, the interesting thing, we're going to start comparing values like this. We can't tell how light or dark this is until we start having other values next to it. And this uh, this cube, I said this is the middle value. It's not the shadows. It's the middle value, but it's darker than the wall and it's darker than the tablecloth. So we're going to start comparing, you know, comparative values, some people call this. But all, all that means is we're looking at stuff. We're saying, hey, how dark is this compared to that? How light is that compared to this? You know? And that's all we're doing. That's too thin. It's also got to chunk it. So I'm going to take some of this off. Because it's just too thin. If it's too thin, I'm just going to be fighting it. Okay? So better to... Uh, Better change it now than than just fight it the whole time. All right. That's a little stiff paint, and it was a little aggressive putting it on there, so. So how that pulled it around a little bit, that's 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 a little too much. Um, now I'm applying the paint and I've got my brush a little bit more at an angle. And uh, that's because I'm trying to I'm trying to shove it down into the I'm trying to get it into the fibers of the canvas. So we're gonna continue to, to get the paint laid down into here. Another thing is sometimes people avoid, you know, putting you know, paint, overlapping paint areas. And you don't want to do that. It makes your, your paint feel, you get these little, like, white lines around stuff where you get these mealy little, again, white lines that you can see, you know, or you put the canvas up to the light and again, you can see through it everywhere around the contours and the edges. And that's just, that's, a, that's, that's an amateurish mistake. And so some artists will actually have you pull the, you know, over, you know, pull this you know, into here and pull this down into there and they're, they're really trying to get the, the painting to have, what I mean is they'd go, okay, we're going to go ahead and pull that in there and then we're going to, you know, bring this down into there and we're going to bring this down to there. And, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to get, make sure that there are no areas where there's, you know, that, those, those thin little emaciated layers of paint. We don't want that. That's not a, that's not a, a look that we're, that we are after. Uh, so, so this forces you to run the paint, you know, ac across you know different areas of the painting. Um, the only problem is once you do this, well, now you have to 
you know, now you have to work back into the soup, back and forth and back and forth and try to try to get it. But you do gain something. I don't want to make it sound like, well, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a terrible idea. It's not. It's actually a really good idea. It's just that then you have to, you have to work back into the painting. You have to, you know, make the painting look like, you know, that, like that this edge. You can also do that to soften an edge, but that, that edge right there, that there's a difference between the wall and the, and the cube. So, and again, we've also sort of softened, you know, this little gradation I had going down. So I'd have to put that back in, you know, a little bit. This would be getting lighter as it comes down. This is getting lighter as it comes down. Like so. Like so. All right. Now again, this is the middle value, so this is this is the lighter value here, and uh, of the two, that's too light. Um, So this is the lightest value of the cube. Now I already mentioned that there is a term for when you have two planes that come together. One plane goes lighter and one plane goes darker. So on this one right here we'd want to decide, hey, which of these is going lighter and which one of these is going, going darker. And sometimes you'll have them switch. And what I mean by that is this will have this get lighter on this side. But on this side, where it's right next to this edge, this will get a slightly darker as it gets next to that edge, and then it gets lighter as it moves over. Okay, and then if this is the one going darker, if this is the edge going darker, where this is touching that, this gets slightly lighter. Now you got to be careful with this illusion. If you if you do it too much, it doesn't. It, it looks weird. Like there's these little bits of light that are kind of scattering all over the place. It don't look quite correct. So you have to really blend this in, otherwise it won't look right. And so, you know, that's that's important to decide which which is it, which which one am I looking at, or is it this should be darker and this should be lighter? I mean, that's that that's the question we want to ask ourselves. Which which is it? Um, So I'll just go ahead and soften this a little bit as it moves over, just a scotch and a smidgen and a pinch and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and put some more, a little bit darker, darker again as this edge is abutting that lighter edge, one should be going darker. So this got blown out a little bit, so we're going to come back in here and we're going to darken this up a bit. Okay. like so. Now a lot of times when you're doing this you'll have what's called a rough in, uh, which is what I'm doing right now, we're roughing in the values. Um, and you know, so we're just getting the basic relationships on here yet. Uh, we're still getting those established. But you have what's called the rough in phase, which is what we're doing. We're just putting in the basic value by your relationships. And then you have, you know, where you just continually try to play with your, your edges and, and get things to really start to happen the way you want them to on this on this uh, on this object. So again this is our light values up here. 
Um, this is this little sliver of light right back there on the back of the corner of the of our cube. I still think that we've got a little bit more room for this to get a little bit darker. Now, there's so much gray already that I'm that's here, and the gray has a lot of white. And so this is lighter than this by almost three steps of value, but I'm using this dark gray. And the reason why is we have to do what's called overmixing, um, or pardon me, undermixing, where I'm I'm making I'm grabbing a value that's two or three, or sometimes even four times darker, because by the time it mixes with the oil paint, it'll just barely have darkened it. It's only it's only dropping this by little half steps. So again, that's that's under mixing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead. And for those that are in the beginning painting class, you know where we did that assignment. What does it look like I'm doing right now? I'm doing back brushing. So we're using some back brushing. We're putting this, and I'm also got my my brush at an angle. I'm putting the the paint on here. Now I can change direction too when I back brush. Uh, now I'm going diagonally, right? And so. Um, but I'm just barely trying to mix this value in here just enough. Now I gotta be careful because again this is starting to look a bit dark, but remember we haven't put the shadows on yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and put this the shadows on the shadow on here, the, the the shadow side of this cube. And there's a lot, you know, we won't know what this thing looks like until we have a context. So it's not until we actually get all the values on where we know how this is going to look, how they look in relationship one to the other, and so forth and so on. So go ahead and get this. And this is actually has a little bit it's too thick. So we're going to go ahead and thin this down a bit. There we go. Again, I, when I start, I'm actually more perpendicular. You might be like, hey! You said something about buttering. I'm not buttering yet. I'm actually trying to get this worked in to the canvas, fill in those holes, you know, the canvases, you know, all these little textures and holes from the weave of the of the cloth. And we need to get some paint in there so that it will move around. So that's what I'm doing. I'm really trying to get it in there so that I can then, you know, use paint on top of it. That's when you get that luscious, buttery, you know, sort of look that is unique to oil paint. Nothing else will you know, looks like that. Nothing else is like that. It's something very, very unique to uh, to oil painting. And that's why we use oil. Why would someone oil paint? You know, there's all this stuff, and it it smells, and it's messy, and all these sorts of things. And why would I use it? And it's because it's got a look that you can't get any other way. You can try with acrylic, but it doesn't quite work. Um, or I should say, it's harder to make it work like that. I've seen some, I've seen some magicians that have, that can take that acrylic and almost make it. You know, you'd swear, oh wait a minute, is that an oil painting? But that's a tough gig. That's that's hard to do. To make someone go, wait a minute, is that an oil painting? Because acrylic has a very different look. Now I know you can thin it down, put it on paper, it's going to look like watercolor. Um, but it has a sheen to it that's a little different than oil. So to make it go matte, oil is a little bit more matte than acrylic is. Well, depending on whether you're using a lot of medium, oil can get really shiny. You can get so shiny you can't even, you know, can't hardly see the the paintings. So some of those early, you know, 17th century paintings are just glossy as you know a gemstone or something. Uh, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about um, if you use just oil paint. Uh, without any medium to it, it's going to dry relatively semi, you know, semi matte. Not super matte. It's going to have a little low, low sheen or something. Um, this has so we're using these form shadows. This is light values, this is middle values, this is dark values, and then in the dark values we have some reflected light that's happening in there. That's what I'm putting in here right now is the reflected light. As far as that goes. Um, again, this looks pretty. This looks pretty dark, but it's not the darkest. We don't have so. There's 
this cast shadow. Cast shadows are darker than form shadows. This is a form shadow. This is the dark value of the object. The dark value and it has a little bit of reflected light. But cast shadows are darker than form shadows if the values are the same. So this up here is the same value all the way around. It's just we have light sculpting it. So these are the same. It's just a different face. So that means that the the cast shadow of the ball on the cube is going to be darker than this over here because cast shadows are darker than form shadows. It's kind of cool, really. Um, put this under here. All right. Bring that back. This does get a little bit lighter as it comes over here. So it's not like shadows are static. They, they, they change their values. They have reflected light and other stuff going on in here. So that'll affect how the shadow looks and all that good stuff. And so we should, you know, we should be prepared for that. A little more reflected light. This then has, now I'm going to use straight black, but again, by the time this blends in here, this is under mixing. This is what, you know, this is about a middle value that I've got here, or just darker than a middle value. I'm using straight black, but by the time I start to blend that in, it's going to get lighter very, very quickly. So again, under mixing, we have to really push stuff around uh, when we're dealing with this stuff we call oil paint to make it work. Okay, this is going to get a little bit lighter through here, reflect the light, okay, want some of that. This gets a little lighter over here because of reflected light. Now this is going much lighter because again by the time it mixes with all that black that's in that gray, it's going to darken this considerably. And so that's way too light. But by the time I just stroke it a couple times, it's barely, you know, it's it's a barely a nuance. So again, that's this is stuff to get used to when we're working with this with this stuff we call oil paint. So again, this is going to come in here and we're going to go ahead and make this um, a little darker. This is that bit of the shard of light, if you will, on the top of that, on the, on the top of our cube here. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to start to, uh, there's some more reflected light that I haven't put in here yet. Uh, this gets lighter as it comes down because of reflected light, reflects here, back up into there. So we're going to make sure we have the reflected light. Okay. We're also going to come over into here and we have this cast shadow on on the cloth and we have to this is somewhere we have to decide which, you know, we're going to look up there and say, "Hey, which is darker?" Um And so we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to darken and we're going to darken for the cast shadow. And the dark, this, this darker cast shadow is going to make the cloth look lighter too. It's going to, you know, so by putting this dark value, we're going to have, you know, again, the, the lights are going to start to look lighter because of the relationship of the cast shadow to the lights. Um, and again, I'm not blending just yet. I'm, I'm trying to get this, this paint down into the texture of that weave of the canvas. Okay. Now I try to clean this up. Okay.
All right. I'm looking at this thing again and it seems like this this cube is a little bit too light through the the darkest part of the of, in the darks is this corner and then it gets lighter as it moves over because of reflected light so again I went in there with straight black which seemed way too dark and then by the time I start blending it it starts to lighten considerably very very quickly like so. Now this also gets a little lighter as it hits along this edge before it goes into shadow. This edge will catch a little bit of light. Okay, remember on something that's flat we have five, we have five different families of form shadow. We have light values, highlight, middle values, dark values, and reflected light. Now this isn't supposed to be a highlight, so I need to soften this. But I'm just saying that it gets a little bit lighter at that edge. And then it, as it comes off of there, it's going, to dark, it's going to darken as it comes off that edge. But we want that idea that it's getting lighter as it comes up to that edge and moves over. Now there's another type of when objects touch there's something called an occlusion shadow and a lot of times it's so it's where something touches so where this this thing touches along this along along the uh, table there's that occlusion shadow. So you want to include that occlusion shadow in our in our painting. Alright, we're start, we're already starting to get something that's starting to feel like it has a certain amount of depth. We also have some reflected light in the shadow in here. Uh, the shadow also gets lighter as it comes back into here. And so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to give a nod to some of this stuff happening. We want, again, this, if this has the same value back here as it does here, it'll jump. And we want it to sit down a little bit as it goes back, which means there's a natural, uh, shadows get a little bit lighter as they go back normally. Uh, usually, like with any uh, rule like that, there can be a certain exception. But here's the deal, there's gonna be less contrast there than up here, or this will jump forward. And so we don't we, we that that's just the way light works. We have things of higher contrast come forward, things of less contrast go back. And so we're gonna soften the 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 shadow back there. Plus, this also will start to soften the edge. The edge at the back will be a little softer and the edge at the front is a little sharper. And that will help this to, to uh feel Correct. All right. So we got some nice stuff. Now I'm going to come over here with black. I'm going to try to get the occlusion shadow under there. All right. So just a little bit of an occlusion shadow right there. All right. So now we've played enough with the. Uh, with the usual suspects or whatever and we want to we want to actually paint the the sphere that's what we came here for we didn't and we're not going to worry about detail just yet for right now we're going to keep de detail to a minimum uh, we, we want to uh, make sure that we have the with the form shadows right if we don't have the form shadows right what happens is that people usually go nuts on the detail, they don't squint their eyes, they don't look for the basic forms, and they start just putting, like there's, you know, um, this is made out of wood, so there's a grain to this cube. And then all of a sudden they start making the grain marks way too dark, and it looks like somebody went up to that cube and started attacking it with a, 
a Sharpie marker and we don't want that. Now I'm using straight white on this because again it takes a lot to lighten a gray and pull it up to that next step. Uh, there's the videos on tinting strength of paint. Again if you don't understand that watch that because it's something that is really important especially when we first start painting. Now I'm, I'm actually buttering because I just realized I was holding too close on the brush and that I wasn't I, I didn't have the right angle. Again you know trying to multitask sometimes you know just doesn't work as well but we have to remember that you know we need to uh, use the right angle to the brush, uh, the correct angle. I should I keep saying right. Um, if it's a right angle to the surface, then that's a problem. But if we want to, if we're trying to blend, but if we're trying to blend and put paint down, well then we need to butter it on. We need to have it almost parallel, kind of like putting butter on bread. If you take that knife and stand it up on its edge, try to put your butter on, you're not going to have much toast left. But if you, you know, go ahead and turn the, you know, the, the edge down, so you have the flat side down, and then spread your butter that way, you're not going to, you know, you're, you're going to have toast left at the end of that when you get done. So, anyway, this is just a little bit stark. Go ahead and pick up a little paint that was too much, too dark. Get it a little bit lighter. Get this to, there we go. Blend in. Um, <clears throat> that actually is getting lighter because that's canvas beneath. So I scraped it too much and, it, and the canvas below is showing. So tried to put a little bit more in there. Um, we could also, if we wanted to push this a little bit more, make it seem like there's there's more of a gradation. Now again, it looks seem like I was using that really aggressive because I was really trying to introduce that paint again into that. That was probably too much too dark. So let me go ahead and take some of this off. Scrape it a little bit. Come back in there. And there, there we go. That's good. So again, I, I, I knew there was two. So black were really, you know, this, this, it's, it's higher tinting strength than the white. And it takes quite a bit. In fact, I just got pure white because again, I'm trying to, trying to get this to blend and the lighter grays just wouldn't be enough white to lighten it enough. Uh, and so again, this is called over mixing where I'm using a far lighter value to work into something that has, you know, where I'm trying to pull it up the value scale more than, you know, a step or, you know, more like a step, step and a half. You have to really get in there. You have to really push it around. Otherwise, you know, you know, make it far lighter or far darker to either darken or lighten the, the area we're looking for. But just by Increasing that a little bit, it looks like there's more of a gradation of light across here. And I, I, I need to butt, you know, have a different angle. This will then go down a little bit differently. And there we go. So again, we've now the 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 sphere is really the sphere is really starting to is, is popping because there's no value on it. So we need to we need to address that. We came here not just to play around. We came here to to uh, paint the sphere. And I'm going to put a little bit more oil paint up here because I'm out of white. Uh, and I'm going to want some of that. Now I'm going to ask myself about how dark the the, the values are in the shadows versus the you know the the values and the lights and stuff like this. The, uh, the sphere is actually quite, you know, it's, it's darker than even this cast shadow over here, which makes me realize how much lighter this might become, but we're gonna have the highest contrast. Now I'm gonna have to lift this up because I can't see that edge. It's, it's just drifting too far from me in perspective. So um, I'm lifting up this up so I can see it a little better. All right, so I'm just putting more and more of this in. Just go ahead and adding more paint. You know, doing what needs to be done, all that good stuff. Um, put more paint down. Trying to get this. Trying to get this uh, to have enough paint so again I can blend into it. And 
And I'm just gonna, for right now, for the, the shadow side, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this in with this, uh, this, this um, value. All right. There's a little bit. I'm going to use the corner of my brush see if I can bring this this cast shadow comes around the foot of this this sphere a little bit more than what I've got it. Um it's also got quite a bit of white paint there. I'm never going to be able to darken it. And so instead of building that up, which is what people do, they'll just keep fighting it trying to pile the paint on, we're going to go the opposite way. We're going to go ahead and wipe it out. Wipe off that paint so we're not fighting the paint. Because you will lose that battle. You will not win that. No matter how stubborn you're being, you're fighting a losing battle. Just be, just take the smart road. Don't, don't be, you know, I, I used to be really stubborn. I'm going to win it. Never did. Because it's just the, it's just the nature of the paint. Now I'm just like, oh, yeah, gonna going to scrape it. Going to go ahead and wipe it. Instead of just sitting there and fighting it and getting all upset and breaking all my New Year's resolutions about cleaning up the language, you know, just that sort of stuff. Out of frustration, you know, you're getting all, oh, rah, rah, rah. and we don't want that. We, we want to make this an enjoyable experience. That's what painting is supposed to be about, supposedly. That's what the, that's what the brochure says, anyways. Um, so... That's what we're looking for, a positive experience. Don't want probably find plenty, plenty of negative ones in life. We we don't need them. We we want a we want a good positive experience. Hold on to those like hold on to it like gold, because that's not always the case. Okay, so that's looking a little better. Then we're gonna go ahead and go into the lights and uh um, so there's a highlight. I'm gonna I'm gonna protect that with a with this lighter value. Now it's not white, but it's gonna get you know dirtied up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And the highlight melts into the light values. So again, I want that this um, this value here. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in the middle value. Now I don't have enough paint in my brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and get a little mineral spirits. I just I need a lot more paint. There we go. Oh, that's all that black that's still in that brush. That's not going to do me any favors. All right, so we'll go ahead and look up there. Look at the so again. I'm going to lift this up so I can see it as I'm putting it, putting it in. Now. Again, I'm going to be working back and forth into this into this sphere of mine. So there's a back and forth that starts to happen with the painting, and that's a good thing. It's it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So. All right, so that's we're looking for light values, middle values, and dark middle values. Um, and of course, we have the highlight. The highlight melted in because this is a, a made out of paper. The little fibers that make up paper, you know, are fuzzy. There, so it, it's not very slick. The smoother the surface, you know, the higher the highlight. So think of glass, think of metal. They throw a, a pretty bright highlight. And that's because the material, you know, the fact that the the material they're made of makes the surface really, really smooth. And the more smooth it is, the more reflective it is, and all that good stuff. We're then gonna come in here and we're gonna go ahead and darken for some of the darker middle values. Whoops, that was way too much of a 
You might say, well, that was some serious undermixing right there. Yeah, it was too much. So we're gonna come back in here. And that might be too much to deal with, but we'll find out in a second. I might have to wipe that area, but that's all right. Again, it's not a big deal. It's oil paint for heck's sake. We can go into it, back, forth, you know, lighten it, darken it, do all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, this is gonna be, I think, just a little bit. So I'm going to uh, use my brush, again, much more perpendicular. In other words, almost a 90 degree angle, because I think I told you that scrapes off paint. Well, I can use that as I'm adding paint to scrape paint as well. And then I can go back into to blending it and see if that's you know closer to what I want before I just go off and and uh, and start wiping down the whole area. That's not what I it's not what I want. I'm now going to go ahead and blend this out. So I'm going to uh, this looks right now like uh, it's cut paper or something. So I'm going to go ahead and soften this. To make this seem like it's this soft shadow going around uh, this this sphere. For those in the painting class, this is the uh, right to left um, blending, but I'm doing it now in a semicircular manner. But I'm just smushing that edge together. You know, I'm not I'm not back brushing it. I'm just trying to go with the direction of the object. So again, we're going to get a um, a softening of the of the values. Now once again I need to lift this up a bit take a look at this. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and it's not gonna be like this forever and I'm like you're gonna be like hey I can't see that what are you doing? I'm just trimming this up so this is actually more round. So Okay, now we're gonna come over here. So right now I'm pushing out the paint. It's getting bigger and taller in a couple places to make it more round. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you right now that that dark right there is too dark, and that's okay because I'm going to come over here, and now I'm going to scrape along there. I'm actually removing paint. So I can do it with a paper towel, but I can also do it with a brush. Now that with a brush, it's gonna be a little bit softer. Not a ton softer, but it's gonna be a little bit softer. So I'm gonna go ahead and come on in here a little bit, soften that up. I'm using straight white because there's so much black there that if I don't, it's not going to, uh, it's not gonna lighten it enough. So, and I'm going with this, sort of with the, this is round this way, so I'm going with the, the surface. Say, hey, this is a round surface, therefore I'm going to follow that round surface. Okay, so now my strokes are going to get smaller and smaller as I start trying to, to deal with this, uh, with this sphere. Okay, so I can kind of see, what if I take my eyes out of focus, it looks like we've got the highlight blending into the middle value and the middle value blending into the darker middle values because middle values have two faces a light side and a dark side and now I need to get on over here into the shadows because we also have 
three types of light in the shadows. Okay. So we're going to go, all right, well, we need to have three types of light in the shadows. I mean, I guess, whatever. Um, and we do. We want that. we we got to get over here and, 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 and deal with it. Okay. Now, where the light and shadow meet, that's the darkest part of the object. And what we call that is the core shadow. Now, over here is reflected light. Now, I just pulled a pretty light value and pulled it on in here, but here's the deal. When I, when I start blending this, it's going to start getting darker very quickly because of all the black that's over there. So, um, I'm, I'm making it lighter for the reflected light to leave the core shadow, which is the darkest part in the shadows family um, of the sphere. Now I have to be careful because everything here should be darker than anything over here. So we, we don't want it to we don't want it to go too light or we're in trouble. There's also this reflected light right down here. Okay, so we have basically core shadow, then it gets lighter in what are called the dark tones, and then it gets lighter still into what we call the, the reflected light. So, we want to be able to create a, a painting that has, or gives a nod to all this sorts of stuff. Now, we've just barely got this thing, uh, you know, roughed in. This, is, this now barely has all the values, which is good because now we can start to compare the, the little nuances, okay? And so I could very easily be painting on this thing for another three, four hours, just trying to, even as much as six hours, trying to get this all to, to do exactly what I want. And I'd be using smaller and smaller brush strokes. And I'd be using, again, I'd be buttering it on, so to speak. Um, as I was working on it. Going lighter and lighter and lighter and back and forth and lighter and darker and darker and lighter. Yada, 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 all that good stuff. Now this has reflected light that's also blowing out the, the core shadow down here. Let's make sure we don't go too nuts on this too quickly. Um, so it's getting lighter as it comes down. Core shadow is darker as it goes up. I gotta be careful to, to not stay in any one place for too long. If you do, you'll start to get uh, a painting that starts to have the consistency of oatmeal or something like that. We don't, again, we don't want something like that. That's, that is not what we're looking for. So again, we're gonna go ahead and reestablish this reflected light down here. Again, that's way too light. But by the time we start, again, blending it in, it's gonna be fine. Using a very light touch as I'm blending this in, which again is what I want. Too heavy, and it's just going to take all this out. Whoops. Just trying to flatten this out a little bit, but this brush is a little wonky, so now I've got a little bit of. There we go, took it out. Um. We're going to continue to work on this just a little bit. So again, this is again the reflected light. I think that reflected light can go just a little bit lighter right down here. 
just a scotch. I'll put just a little bit more in there because then we're going to move it around a bit. Now if I left that, that would be wrong because that's way too light. But again, we're going to come over here. Okay. Okay, so that looks like reflected light. I think that's that's looking a little better. And then we're gonna come over here. This looks like this could be just a little bit lighter over here. Just a scotch and a smidgen. Be what the words grandma used to use when she would be cooking. Be like, how do you make that? She'd be like, ah, just a dash of this, and a smidgen of that, scotch of this. You're like, wow, that don't tell me anything. Um, all right, so I think the shadow side is looking decent. We have again, we have coarse shadow, we have dark tones, we have reflected light. Um, I think some of the dark tones maybe got a little bit too light. Up here, so we're going to bring some more of the value back down into there. So it's getting a little bit darker as it goes up. Um, try to see if we can coax a little bit more contrast out of here. Brought a little bit darker, straight black actually. And we're going to go ahead and it's going to Again, it's, it's going to go ahead and w work its way into here, get a little bit lighter as it does. All right, and now I think we can go back into the lights because I think the lights are still just a little bit too dark in a couple places. Um, but that's all right. We're going to go ahead and go straight into straight white, and we're going to start off. We got so much black in here, I need to kind of push some white in there to overcome all the gray. And so, a little cleaner white, a little cleaner white. I think that'll be fine. So, again, we're going to go ahead and start with this clean white. That's not as clean as I could get. Let's make it a little cleaner still. Uh, so, so, a little bit more clean white in there. So, we got all these wonderful nuances, but we've lost a little bit of the in this contrast, so we're going to go ahead and I'm not going to leave that. It's, it's going to get a little bit darker as I as I work it in, um, and that's fine. We want we want you know I put that there knowing that by the time I work it in, it's not going to be it's going to be darker. You know, it's going to be getting darker. So because the the lightest light in this thing is not white, if I left it as white, it would be wrong because that is not what's happening. And let's see if we can grow just a little bit more in there. Again, we want the most contrast on our, our center of interest, which is our, our, uh, our sphere. A little too dark. So again, I'm just uh, I'm just touching this a little bit, mixing it here, touching a little bit of it, mixing it there. Trying to get this to a 
that's a little bit much, so we're going to bring a little bit more of the gray over here. There we go. Because that was a little bit too dark on that end anyways. Um, it's starting to look like, you know, it didn't look like it was in the right place. Well, that's too light right there, so we're going to grab a little bit of a gray, move this back in. Um, maybe a little bit more gray. Move that back in. All right, and then we're going to try to get a little bit more. Now because this, this moves, uh, the, the surface, it, it moves around a lot, you know, this is the first layer. Um, and some people will do what's called Alla Prima. Now with Alla Prima, usually you're going to have broken you know, brushwork and thick to thin and, and this type of thing. Well, this is thin everywhere. Um, and in fact, it's it paint is oil paint is actually transparent. Well, it's it's got some transparency to it. Even the most opaque in a thin layer, you're going to see through it. That that makes, you know, perfect sense, right? And so um, and a lot and so a lot of this is we can see the canvas kind of through this. And so a lot of a lot of artists, even if they're what we call direct, so what I'm doing is direct painting. I'm directly mixing and, and stuff like that. But a lot of your direct painters will still um, do at least two layers, you know. So I would go ahead and you let this dry, and then you come back over the top of it with the same layer. But because of the fact that you've already got again that those grays and stuff underneath, it has just more opacity. You get more more. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Value range, and it, it's just it's good all around. And, and so you know a lot of again a direct painters though you'd let this dry just a little bit or set up just a little bit. You can't let it set up to where it gets sticky. That ain't gonna work. So you either come back in the next day where you can still go into it because it's it's still workable, or you let it dry all the way and you come back into it. And just depending on your technique and who you're talking to would be you know the difference between what they're gonna say they're gonna do. Um, so again, I'm going to try to bring this. So we said, all right, what about that thing with the uh, with the edges? Well, one edge is going darker, or another edge is going lighter. So um, this again, this ball is made out of cardboard, slightly brown, right? Um, we're not working with color just yet, but we are working with value, and that brown has a, a value to it that's darker than the wall. So what I'm doing is I'm going to try to make the wall a little lighter while this is going. A little darker. Now it doesn't stay dark everywhere. This starts to get lighter as it goes into the highlight. So they switch a little bit. They switch it up. And that's that's interesting with light. Light's always changing. The values are always shifting. And we want that. We that's what's that's what's gonna make it look look good. So So this will go a little bit lighter and then it's gonna very gently transition. It's so soft. This, this, uh, what I'm trying to pull off here, this illusion. And again, photographers, we usually talk about this. And again, painters, really good, uh, you know, representational painters and and realists and photorealists know about this effect and use it all the time. Uh, and it's that things very softly will do this, where this hits this edge and it gets a little bit. The background gets a little lighter. And the edge goes a little darker. And then this has to transition out so soft, because if you don't, it's going to look like some sort of weird halo. Some sort of strange light source thing that's going on there. And that's what we don't want. That's the hard part of this, is, is not do it so strong that people are like, what is that about? That's not what we want. So... I said how we, you know, there's, that a lot of artists would, would, you know, would do this in two sessions. And if, if you were an illustrator, like I was an illustrator for years, uh, I would certainly, yeah, this is this is my rough end where I'm just trying to get the values. I'm trying to get a good layer of paint, trying to get a little bit of movement. And then when it, once it's set up, then I'd come back in. And that's where I'd be like, I'd really be worried about the edges and cleaning up some of these irregular lines and just really nailing it down, making it look so just so good it makes your teeth hurt it looks so great um you know so it just 
just man, how did they do that? Um, you know, that's that's where the that's where the magic happens. Now, we, again, we do want this to have enough paint so we can move it because again, and so when you do that second layer, you'd actually have to put all you know the same amount of paint back down again so you can actually get the paint to move again. Because so the the second layer, you're actually putting you know again the same amount of paint over the the paint below it. But the the great thing is that that layer becomes you know your your basic value structure that anchors your you know sort of that realism and then you come over it and you play with edges a little bit and you do a little bit of a uh, slight of uh, visual sleight of hand and then next thing you know people are like holy smokes how did he do that did you see that and that's how it, that's how it's done but it's all about the values and well it's about the edges too but we're not dealing with edges just yet we're just dealing with values we're not even we don't care about edges as much this time around uh it's not it's not what we're here so all right so now we've got enough of these values that this is starting to look like it has a, a feeling of some reality of some sort you know representationalism at least it certainly uh, you know has even without a whole lot of detail it starts to have a certain sort of realism that we start to look and, and, and see in this now again some of this uh, you gotta watch out some of your you know when you're when you're blending if you blend too much you start to get a texture that looks like oatmeal and there's some of that happening right through here so you get you gotta really be be careful about that that you don't get that that oatmeal texture going on because it's it's not it's not good uh, I do watercolor and teach people with watercolor people always like to talk about things being overworked in watercolor it's like the watercolor's favorite thing to say but and, and people sometimes mistakenly think that that's not possible in oil oh yes it is and it's 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 the fact that oil can be worked and worked and worked and people just work it and work it and work it and overwork it and beat it and kill it and then they're whipping it you know the whole whipping a dead horse sort of thing a terrible terrible uh um a horrible analogy i don't know who you know whatever but um the idea is that you can overwork and you got to be really careful about that as an artist And so that's all we would be doing. We'd really be trying to reestablish the values, uh, play with, uh, you know, get the, make sure we don't have any textures that are looking, you know, like they've been overworked. We would be using, you know, smaller brush strokes as we blend, uh, trying to get those nuances. That's where that next, I said I could put another six hours in on this, and you could. But we do have the basics, and that's what we're looking for, just the basics, uh, ideas of form, the basic ideas of value. Again, I talk quite a bit about a value in my, my classes and on the YouTube site, because it really is that importance. Uh, it's, it's what creates the illusion of depth is light. You, you turn the lights out, you can't tell what something looks like, you know. Because that's and it's it's all visual. That's and so we we, the better the light, the the more the light, you know, the stronger the light source, the 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 better that it's directed. The the more cl the clearer the light source is to the object. All these things really have a major impact on how the finished product looks. It's 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 just you can't you know you, you don't want to play down the importance of that. It really is where. You know, it's the, the old saying, the, the rubber meets the road, so to speak. And so that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep the... I think we've got, I've, I've got the uh, the light values and the middle values light enough that they, they read like they're at least on the lit side. There was a time where they were starting to, you couldn't tell. You're like, well, is that, you know, the values just weren't separated enough. In other words, everything in the lights have to be lighter than everything in the darks. And everything in the darks have to be darker than everything in the lights. And if it's not, then that's a problem. And now we've got it where it's, that's, you know. Not as big an issue. 
Then I'm going to try to get just a little bit more contrast just right there. I right just again bump the contrast just a little bit more. See if we can get away with just a tiny bit more. And and it's it's interesting. The more that the the the, the more contrast you get, the more realistic the thing starts to look. Uh, and it's all about form shadows. Form shadows is what gives something a three-dimensional quality. And it's the first level of importance. Light, well, actually, it's the second level. The first level is what's the light side and what's the shadow side. If I can't tell what, if I can't tell immediately this is the lit side, that's the shadow side, you're in a lot of trouble. So that's the first level. The next level is what are the shadow shapes? What are the form shadows? Where are they and what is their shape? You need to be able to identify them very clearly and as artists we try to clarify things like that so they have you know they're 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 very easily recognized so that they you know that there is no question about what it is we're looking at okay so and then the last level is the detail and the details have to conform to the first two and what we usually do is we get so excited about getting in there with the detail that we lose you know the form shadows we lose the you know the first level which is what's light what's what's dark what are those shapes and those have to be very clear the next level is in and in those shapes there are form shadows and then the last part is in and in those form shadows there are details details conform to form shadows it's not the other way around so again we've got just enough information here that we've got a little painting it looks like it's got a fairly full range of value um, so go ahead and give this a shot go ahead and sit down uh, I've got reference for those in the class. I'll send the, it out along with this video. And you're going to sit down with the reference and you're going to do, you know, a painting uh, using of the sphere and the, and the, the, the cube. And you're going to try to do your very, very best. And you're going to, you know, send me the results uh, for those that are in the class. Uh, if you're not in the class, sorry, you're, you're probably not going to get a response. But for those in the class where that's part of, you know, you're, you're getting my feedback, send me, send me your stuff. I want to see it. Um, you know, so, and this is how we're going to do this painting. This has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes. Uh, you know, get out there and be more creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.